One way you can picture the electromagnetic spectrum is that it's almost like a piano keyboard. In the middle, there's a few keys that are the only ones that the human eyes are sensitive to. So there's a few wavelengths in the visible part of the spectrum. And beyond that, there's lots of other keys that we typically don't sense. So up on the right hand side, you're up into the high frequencies and the notes get higher and higher as you go up to the right. And down to the left hand side of the piano, you get to lower and lower frequencies. And that's where we are with microwaves and the radio waves. But the electromagnetic spectrum, it's all the same phenomenon, it's all electromagnetic waves, and they just have different frequencies. But they're essentially the same physical phenomenon. One of the key things that we are left with because of the legacy of radar being developed in secret during the Second World War is that the bands of frequencies that we use for radar are labelled in an entirely random fashion. In order to make it difficult for spies to join together the dots and understand what they were doing with radar, what they did was actually labelled the different frequency bands in a random way. And this is why we get the C and X and L and P bands, is that they are actually designed to be confusing and difficult. And unfortunately for us, that just means we have to memorise them, is that there is no simple order to those labels that make it easy to, rem easy to remember. So we start with the longest wavelength in a radar that is flown on various satellites, which is the L band. L is easy to remember, it's the longest wavelength. So remember that the L band is actually as long as a piece of paper and just as a house number. Now remember, it's, it's about 25 centimeters. Bands are not defined exactly. So there is, it's a range, of, a range of centimeters. So, but just as a, to remember, again, as a house number, this is the size of the L band. Whether it's American, US letter form, or it's the European uh, Dean forms, doesn't matter. Just remember, this is the size of an L band. Because we will then learn that an L band sensor or an image represents the interaction of the radar wave with things on the Earth's surface that have this size. So it's important to remember. Okay, now let's go on to the next wavelength that is being used in space has been used and will be used again and we come to the sensor overviews later. It's half of this size, so just fold the paper once and the next wavelength is S-band, so it's shorter than the L-band, maybe remember it this way. So this is now the size of the S-band and we fold the piece of paper again and we come to a very famous wavelength C-band. C-band images have been acquired over the longest history, so we can now look back starting to 91 uh, to well over 25 years of C-band measurements from space. So this is a very important wavelength. Remember the size. So you folded your paper twice and you come to the C-band wavelength. So this is the C-band. As a house number now, about five centimeters. Oh, and I missed to tell you, well, this would be about 10 centimeters. So again, just remember house numbers. It's, that's, I guess, important um, when we uh, go into more detail. Now, once again, we fold it once more and you reach the shortest wavelength um, that we are using in geoscientific applications over surfaces, so not atmosphere, surfaces, um, that's the X-band. That's about two and a half centimeters wavelength. 